go. This is what Jesus told them to do. He said, he told the servants, he said, fill the jars with water. So they did it. And so they filled it up. Scripture says they, they filled it right up to the top. I mean, to the brim. Couldn't get any more water. And then he said to them, now, <clears throat> draw out and take it to the head waiter or the head servant. And so they did. In other words, take some water out of there, put it in a cup, take it to the, the head guy who's basically the wedding planner. He's running the show. And he says, take this to him. Now, these servants, they follow Jesus' directive. They were there. They were just following orders. Now, can you imagine what these guys were thinking? This guy must be nuts. You know, he told us just to fill these jars with water. And now, he must be crazy. He must be like a con man. Goes, yeah, we can pass off this water for wine. Yeah, we're going to do this. And so, you know, and they thought, maybe we're going to get in trouble. Now, don't shoot the messenger. We're just following this guy's orders. So they take it to him. Now Jesus never touched. The scripture said he never touched these jars, never touched the water, never touched it. He just said, fill it up. He said, all right, take some out and take it. So the head waiter, the wedding planner, he tasted what was in that cup. And basically it had become wine. Now he didn't know where it came from because the servants just brought it to him. And those servants, they knew where the water came from. They knew where this came from. But the head waiter had no idea. They just brought to him and said, hey, taste this. We were told to bring this to you. Here you go, taste it. So he was amazed. Man, where did this come from? Now the servants knew, but they kept quiet. They were smart. They kept quiet. And the thing is, signs and miracles that Jesus did a lot of times need some cooperation. The cooperation here was the servants Put the water out of the jar, put it in the cup, took it to the guy, let him taste it. Now, other miracles, signs that Jesus did, was, you know, he had to have cooperation. Remember when he fed the 5,000? What was the cooperation? The little guy had lunch, had a happy meal. He had five loaves and two fish. And he brought it. You know, well, the disciples found this guy, brought him to Jesus. Jesus probably talked to him and said, hey, how you doing? Man, I see he brought you on. That was smart. He said, you were smarter than probably a lot of people around here. Or your mom made sure you had something to eat. He said, but do you mind if I use this? He said, you'll get, you'll get something to eat. But do you mind if I use this? And you know the rest of the story. You fed 5,000 people with all this. And they had leftovers. But there was cooperation. The little boy could have said, ain't no way I'm giving my lunch up. I'm hungry. He could have said no. But instead, there you go. There was the cooperation. Now, a blind guy, he couldn't see. He wanted to be healed. So Jesus made, uh, basically, he made a mud salve. Put mud on his eyes. Now Jesus, and then Jesus told him. Then he said, okay, you can walk around for the rest of your life with mud over your eyes. He said, no, you go wash this off. And this is where you go to do it. So the guy could have had two choices. I'm going to stay like this. Or I need to follow what he said. And when he cooperated with Jesus, when he washed the mud off, what happened? 2020 vision. Man, he, his brain had so much overload it wasn't even funny because he went from completely blind to 2020-2010 combat pilot vision. And, but he cooperated. And then you think about this. When Jesus heard that Lazarus, his friend, had died, he went to the graveyard. And what did Jesus do? When he went to the graveyard. He wanted Martha and Mary to understand what was going to happen. Just to show God's glory. But he didn't. Now he didn't walk into that graveyard and say, come out! Because what would have happened if he had said that? Everybody, Everybody would have busted out of there. And then the people who were watching would have been down the road. You know, I, I'm not staying around for this. But basically what Jesus said was, Where's Lazarus' tomb? They took him. He said, all right, here's the cooperation. Move that stone. Take that stone away. Roll it out of the way. And then he called Lazarus by name. And he came forth. So he had cooperation. And so the thing is, we need to cooperate with Jesus. Jesus gives us opportunities. We need to cooperate with him. We need to have action in there. So the servants took the wine, the cup, with what they you know, took out of the pot the water jars. They took it to the head waiter. He went and said, wow. And so, 
he, the head waiter, called the groom. He said, come here. I got to talk to you. Probably that groom was going, oh, man. He, he already knew that the wine had run out. He goes, oh, great. He's going to embarrass me and my family in front of everybody. And he's going to take me to court. And, you know, we're just not, this is not going to be a good scene in my wedding day. And so, he's holy. Everyone sets out the fine wine first, the good stuff. And they drink all of it. And he said, then, when people have gotten used to all this stuff, they bring out the not-so-good stuff, the cheap stuff. Because people by then won't recognize it. Then, okay, yeah, this is wine, this is wine. And so he said, but, but you have kept the best wine until now. I mean, it was just total reverse protocol. He couldn't believe it. So the groom and his family were saved from embarrassment and legal fees and fines. A serious need was filled by Jesus Christ. This was serious. They needed to fill this. Now, this was an unorthodox move, but it brought great respect and honor to all of these people. And you can bet that this was a wedding to be remembered. Man, did you go to that wedding? Man, they served wine. You should have taken that stuff. They served at the end. Oh, man, nobody does that. And they did that. Man, that was great. So, Jesus, verse 11, Jesus did this. He did it. He performed this miracle, this sign in Cana of Galilee. And this was the first of his signs and miracles. <coughs> he revealed his glory and his disciples believed in him. Now, there are some stories that are circulated. People wrote these things. That, that you can see them in print in different places. That uh, people before this time, now John wrote, this is the first miracle. But some people said that Jesus might have performed some miracles before this time. Now, you know, it's hard to verify some of these things. One story, Jesus, as an infant, dispersed a horde of dragons simply with his words when they came out and threatened his family. Like I said, some of these stories are written. You go, okay. Also, another story is Jesus shortened a 30-day trip into one day that his family was taking. They were going to Egypt. And when they went to Egypt... It says that uh, 355 idols fell down and worshipped him. Like I said, these are stories that were written. And then another story is he made 12 sparrows out of clay and he clapped his hands and commanded them to fly and they flew off. Now, you know, fables, stories, can't verify it. But the thing is, when Jesus did signs and miracles, they always pointed to the kingdom of God. They always verified that he was teaching. They always verified that, yes, he was the Son of God and the Son of Man. And so we don't have any of those stories in Scripture because they're saying, well, that might be something somebody wrote, but that just doesn't fit into Scripture. It's just not consistent with what Jesus was doing. And so some people say that's more for imagination and entertainment. But what is this sign, this miracle that Jesus did? What did it accomplish? Well, first, it revealed his glory. Revealed that not only was he the Son of Man, but he was the Son of God. Because he took water and he turned it into wine. Showing his deity. And then Jesus basically, when he transforms things, he enriches them, he glorifies the natural through divine grace and power. That's what he does. And then his disciples believed on him. Now when he called his disciples, they just knew this guy that was walking down the seashore and he's from Nazareth and his name is Jesus and he said, come follow me, and okay, what's this man? You know, he's kind of got kind of a draw here. What's going on? And so, but they thought, who are we following? He's a teacher. He's a rabbi. But when they saw this, they said, wow. Wow. And what this was was their journey of faith. They saw this. And what else did they see? For three years, they saw Jesus. They heard him teach. They saw him do these things. And it just built their faith. Made it stronger and stronger and stronger. Because why? Because one day Jesus wasn't going to be here. 
He died on the cross. He was buried. He was resurrected. He ascended into heaven where he's at today, waiting to come back. But these guys were the leaders in the church. And so they needed to have a strong faith. What do we talk about the Advent reading? Unshakable faith. And that's what they were getting by following Jesus Christ. And so the thing is, they were truly seeing His glory. They were truly His. And that's what we need to do. If we're truly part of Jesus Christ, if we truly believe Him and follow Him, we'll see His glory. We'll see it. But we have to look for it. It's just not going to slap us in the face. We have to look for it. We have to be aware of it. Two guys walking down the uh, sidewalk in New York City. I know, Gene, you were there. Very quiet place, isn't it? You can meditate. You have no problem. Yeah, right. You know, you got almost, you know, you got to dodge people walking on the sidewalk. These two guys walking down the sidewalk. And one of the guys, they stopped. He said, did you hear that? Did you hear that? Said, what? He said, somebody dropped a quarter. And I heard it hit the, hit the pavement. And it's doo 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 doo. He said, I heard it. They kept walking along a little bit farther. And the, guy said, the other guy stopped and said, Hey, did you hear that? I said, What? He said, There's a bird up in a tree somewhere I can hear it singing. And the thing is, we hear what we're attuned to. That guy was looking for money. The other guy heard a bird. Are we attuned to looking to Jesus and looking for him in the different things? You know, the world, sin, Satan, basically they start off good and it gets bad and then it gets worse. But Jesus basically takes the good and turns it the better and the best. And so we need to help people to understand that and to see that. As we go about, uh, we're not changing water to wine, but when we go, we ought to be a blessing to people. We ought to help them in their everyday lives because it's tough, isn't it? Is life easy? It's not, is it? And you run across people that are having tough situations. And so you try and help them out. Leave them off better than when you found them. My kids say that's a curse. Because we told them, as we moved so many times, we would say, you always leave this place better than when you found them. And they said it's a curse because, yeah, you taught us to do that, and that's exactly what we're doing, and that makes more work, right? If you're going to leave a place, you got to make sure it's clean, you got to make sure all this stuff's done. They said, yeah, we learned that from y'all, and we just can't shake it. We, we just got to make it better. So that's the way we are with Jesus. The water jars were filled for the Lord's purposes. Water, water jars. Think of water jar. You know, pretty common thing. But you know what's good is he can use any means. He can use anybody. He can use somebody that's poor. Use somebody that's weak. I'm going to take this from the water jars. Crack pots. Jesus can use crack pots. You know, we're not perfect. We may have some cracks and fissures in there, but he can use us to bring glory to himself if you just allow it. If you just allow him to do that. Story of that there's a coal miner. And he was known as a mean drunk. I mean, he would drink and mean. It was not a good situation. Family suffered because of it. You know, they, they were, didn't have anything. And you know, he treated them badly. One day, this guy, he met Jesus Christ. Somebody had been talking to him, and he came to Jesus Christ that day, put his faith and trust in him, turned around. And so he would share Jesus Christ when he had the opportunity. He would tell people about Jesus, he would tell people what Jesus did for him. And so one of his friends that knew him in his old life, he was trying to trap him a little bit. And so he said, Yeah, hey, you believe the Bible, you believe in Jesus, all this. Hey, did Jesus turn water into wine? And the guy looked at him and he said, he said, asked him, do you really believe that? He said, yes, I do. He said, let me tell you what happened. He said, I've seen Jesus turn wine into furniture at my house, into food at my house, and into good clothes at my house. So he said, yes, I believe Jesus turned water into wine, but I've seen him turn wine into all kinds of things for the best. And that's what Jesus, that's the business he's in, is to change us for the better. In 2 Corinthians 5.17, 1 Corinthians, excuse me, 5.17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creature, a new creation. Old things are passing away, all things are becoming new. And that's the change that Jesus brings in us. When we come to him, he changes us.
He's in the business of changing. And so has Jesus changed your life? Has He changed you? Let's bow our heads, please. You know, we've seen Jesus' first miracle, sign. The thing is, we put Jesus first in your life in the year 2024. Will He be first? First means, well, you read, you study the Bible. You see what, see what God says. Because when you study the Bible, God's Word, then you'll understand what, how He thinks and what He wants us to do. And then when we study, I'm not just saying casual reading, scanning. I'm saying study the Bible. And know what it says so you can apply it, put it in your life and say, okay, the Bible says this, this is what I'm going to do. So, has Jesus changed your life? We're all born sinners. But Jesus says, I've come to make these things new. And when we come to Him, He changes us. We truly come to Him. Put our faith and trust in Him because of who He is, the Son of God and the Son of Man. He died on the cross. Basically, so that he could pay the penalty, the pain punishment for that sin. And so he could bring it back to a place where we could be in a right relationship with God. And so he basically dealt with the power of sin on the cross. And then when he was resurrected, he dealt with the power of death. So sin and death no longer have power over us. They affect us, but they don't have power over us anymore if we put our faith and trust in Jesus Christ. Has he changed you? Now, the change sometimes it happens instantaneously, other times it's gradual. So, where are you in your relationship with Jesus Christ? I'm going to be standing by this table where the snowman is, Frosty, and Karen's going to play a verse. And if you'd like to come, talk to me, pray where you're at, pray down here, whatever you would like to do, this is your opportunity to respond as you need to.